Hey you guys, this morning we're going to be doing a simple warm-up uh, drawing of an alligator. We're going to do a side view, and I'm going to show you the process uh, kind of that I think of whenever I'm creating a character utilizing basic shapes. So we're going to start out with a circle, triangle, we're going to use some spheres, so you can kind of see the whole process that I utilize when doing simple characters um, uh, in a digital format. And this is applicable to digital, also if you're using Procreate, if you're using Photoshop, if you're using traditional paper, it doesn't matter. The thought process is kind of the same. It's kind of a structured tier to kind of make it really simple for those of you who want to learn how to do characters. So enjoy. Okay, so this is just going to be a really short little tutorial video, something really simple for those of you who don't have a lot of experience in drawing um, or drawing uh, in a digital environment. So today I'm working uh, on a digital tablet. Uh, it's made by a company uh, called XB Pen. Uh, they have a, a lot of different uh, pen displays, pen tablets, um, just a, a myriad of devices that really cater to the digital artist. And this particular one, I believe is the latest and greatest, the Artist 22, second generation. Uh, this isn't a pro model, but it is um, very nice. It's It's got great resolution, but um, I'm not really interested in, in going through the ups and downs concerning this tablet. It is merely a tool and today's focus is going to be on drawing. So, I'm in Photoshop. Photoshop is a program that's been around for quite a while. Uh, I'd say over 25 years. Um, my first experience with Photoshop, I believe, was Photoshop 5. And uh, back in those days, um, I think Photoshop 5 is the first uh, one with a history palette. Uh, gosh, it, it's been so stinking long since... <laughs> I've been using Photoshop, and it is a great program. It's kind of like a Swiss Army tool uh, knife, if any of you are familiar with that type of um, tool. Uh, the Swiss Army knife has a ton of tools in it, from scissors to magnifying glass to, of course, a knife. And Photoshop does a lot, but what I use it for is for drawing, because it's got a great brush engine. Over here on the left-hand side, up in the tab, you can see that I've got a ton of brushes. And again, those are just tools. Um, it's, it's amazing what they can do uh, these days with a pressure-sensitive tablet. But this particular brush is just for drawing. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in. Uh, the resolution is a little bit higher. And I think it might actually work against me because I'm using this computer to also um, record. So, all right, that's enough words. So, what am I drawing? Animals. This is pretty much the shape that I utilize um, when doing a lot of uh, animal drawings. It's a simple circle, and you know circles can have uh, different. Uh, you know, you can go spherical, you can go egg-shaped. It just depends on what the base of your uh, animal uh, character is going to be. And with this, I'm going to draw kind of a side view uh, of an alligator. Uh, a lot of you guys know that to visit my channel know that one of the um, things that I do often is draw uh, a characters from my uh, videos, my um, children's book, which is Frank and Beans. We're not drawing beans today. This is just going to be a rudimentary alligator. So I start out with a circle and I, based upon, you know, experience and seeing a lot of alligators in the world, I know that they're nostril, their nose cavity, uh, tapers into sort of like a triangle. So basically what I do, since we're going to do uh, the alligator facing um, to my left, is we're going to have a circle for its basic head structure. We're going to utilize a triangle, and then we're going to wrap it up with a circle uh, down at the end. But this circle is going to kind of taper up a little bit, so it's going to be like an oval or like a beam. You know, I had a whole class that I did on this shape right here and how this shape right here is wonderful because it is the basis for a lot of different characters 
in the world and how it can really be your friend. I called it the bean. Obviously, the class was called the bean. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that learning your basic shapes, learning how you can use your basic shapes really benefits you in your artistic endeavors. So let's go back to what we're doing, which is basically drawing an alligator. So alligators, so we're drawing kind of an anim, anim, anim what do they call it, anapromorphized. So it's going to have some human characteristics because it is a character, but the, the, the majority of it is going to be uh, alligator-ish because alligators typically, you know, they, they lay down, right? They're laying down and you have their feet. Here's their tail right here. And here's the little eyeball and you got all these squigglies that come around. And here's the second, you just got some fangs. So this particular character starting out with a circle that we add the triangle. So we've got this shape down at the end that kind of tapers. Now we're going to start thinking about three dimensions. So this is kind of where you as a artistic layman and somebody that doesn't know a lot about drawing really will benefit from this exercise. Because right now, three dimensions, we have height, we have width, and then we have depth. That third dimension, okay, that third dimension of depth is where we as as artistic um, individuals tend to kind of want to land, especially whenever we're doing characters. So you need to think in terms of three dimensions. Don't think in terms of a flat surface. This is not a flat surface. This is third dimension. So if I were to draw height, width, and then depth. So whenever I do this final one right here at the depth, what I need to understand and always remember is that even though I'm drawing a side view, there's going to be another side that I can't see, right? So whenever there's another side I can't see, therefore there's a side that I can see. So this, I'm gonna put little black dots on the areas that are closest to me, okay? So this will be a big dot, dot, dot. That's gonna be what's closest to me. What's in the mid ground, it's going to be a little bit smaller because it's further away. And then what I can't see is on the other side, and that's a little dot. Okay, so we're not going to do that one. But what I want you to realize is third dimension. So I'm going to start drawing little, like, lattice. They're called uh, construction or lattice lines. And it's going to help you think in terms of that third dimension. Okay. Even this little exercise will help you really understand that third dimension because this is the closest to me. This is a little bit further away. Even though it's on top of his head, it's not on the same quote unquote plane. Because remember, if we were to do this, this, and that third dimension, this lattice line would be, I'm sorry, this particular, uh, this little dot would be in a particular area on the line, that third dimension, and then this line would be further away. So you, if you remember back in grade school, we did this little exercise, right? We all did this, where we drew this box, okay? And this is important to understand because this teaches you something called perspective. Perspective has to do with your relationship with the object you are looking at. So this perspective, this object is in, is closer to me in relationship to objects that are all the way in the distance. So if I were to draw something in the distance, okay, I'm gonna have these intersecting lines coming all the way back, right? So if I were to draw a box in the distance, then I would have to draw it smaller in relationship. So this could be the same size as this, but since it's further away in the distance, it's going to be smaller, okay? 
So let's go back to the eraser because I've made a complete mess of my canvas. Let's erase some of these items here. Because we're focusing on character. And, and that's the thing I want you to remember. Even though this could be a hyper complex character, it always starts out with circle, triangle, and an oval. And then even this, you know, we're looking at a box here or a square and maybe even a triangle here. So if you look all of this area right here, the silhouette, if I were to color it in or if I were to shade it in, let's say if I were to shade it in really quick, let's go over here. Okay. Edit, fill, foreground color, and then select, deselect. Now, even though that's really rudimentary, you can definitely understand and see how that could be the silhouette of an alligator. And we created it using very simple shapes. So now that we have our basic silhouette in, and we've constructed our lattice lines here, Lattice construction lines. Let's just call them construction lines. I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to go ahead and go over here to the layer palette or layer tab or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to push down that opacity just a little bit. And I'm going to add a layer on top of it. By default, Photoshop adds it on top. So now that looks like a complete mess. How can that be a character? Well, what's really cool with drawing is you don't have to do your first most awesome work the first pencil you put down. It's typically not going to be your final. So that's why you draw light, you take your time, and then whenever you have a reference here to draw upon, then you can start having a little bit more fun and work inside of what you've already created. Okay, so let's get a little angry eyebrow. Get, get some blink in here. Let's get rid of that. See, in very short order, because I created this underneath, now I have the ability to have just a little bit of leeway to create something that has a little bit of character to it. See how that works? I always say, oh, it's not that hard. And then you get people like, I have no freaking idea what you're doing. What are you doing? You're messing me up. And again, this this whole artistic process is just putting the pieces together and making it work. Just get a small head it comes around here. And remember we talked about the lattice lines and the construction lines? they still help because when you have two um when you have two let's say you have a circle here and you have a circle here okay nothing happened in there kind of boring but whenever you have a circle here and a circle here that overlap creates contrast so that's what's happening here so i have this crease that comes here and you have gravity pulling down on this area right here. So it's pulling down. So it's going to kind of bulge out. So I can even draw some of the construction lines there. Okay, so let's go up to his eye. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give those little, little things that are on top of his head a little... Kind of spine of things, spiny dudes. 
keeping it just triangles. That's all I'm doing, keeping it simple. And maybe you see some of the distance. They're a little bit smaller. We talked about, member stuff, and the distance is smaller. They're not going to be the same size as the ones in the foreground. So they're going to be a little bit smaller. And we're just going to stagger them a little bit. Okay. So, in very short order, we have created kind of a sassy gator. He's sassy. Um, whenever it comes to eyes, eyes are, are confusing for some people. And I can totally understand why, because it is a complex form that has the potential to mess you up. But I think if we just take it one step at a time, we can create an eye that is believable, that is pretty cool, and I think will work. So... I'm going to do a little example here. So the way eyes work is a lot of times we do this. And that looks like this, sort of, right? It sort of looks like that. But what you need to always remember that you never typically will draw this first. You don't want to draw this first. You want to understand that the eye is a complex shape and inside is a circle, right? So let's look from the side. So if we're looking from the side, similar to what we have here, you need to remember that this is not just a circle. What is it? It is a sphere. Okay? So once I put in my, my quote-unquote sphere, you can put your little construction lines if you want to, if it helps you. But the lid, it's basically inside of a cavity. A cavity being an opening. So let's say this is the cavity that it's inside right here. This is the socket. This is bone right here that I'm drawing. Okay. So then you have to remember there is skin here. There is skin here. And there is muscle underneath holding that eye. If you ever look at the construction of an eyeball, that will really educate you somewhat to help you understand that you never draw an eye like this, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw the top lid over the eye. And then what I'm going to do is draw the bottom lid. Okay? And now you have this bone that the skin's going to wrap around, okay? And it's basically part of the socket. And then when the lid goes in, it folds. So it's going to go into the socket partially. So where it folds is where you're going to get the lid crease. Okay? And down here, because this eye is going to sit on muscle, all this is going to be muscle. And here's the bottom lid. And again, the bottom lid opens. And you're going to get creases here too. Right? So then, remember, we drew our little construction lines to help us understand this is a ball. If you ever look, you can see this little area right here. It's typically uh, skin color white. You can see part of the muscle underneath and, and the skin uh, underneath the eyeball. Now, near the edge, typically you don't see that because a lot of times you'll have eyelashes right here. And then we draw the pupil depending on what emotion is being expressed, the pupil is pretty big. And then you have the iris. And the iris is going to kind of go almost to the bottom. So I'm going to draw the pupil and pupil is huge. It's a huge pupil. It's a huge pupil, people. We're going to increase our brush size. Okay. And there's the white of the eye. And then, of course, then we're going to put some eye shine on there. Just to give it some realism. Okay. We're going to get rid of the taper. We're going to make our brush bigger. Whoops. And now we're going to shadow the top, shadow a little bit on the bottom. 
we're going to sample. Oops. We're going to put in the highlight right there. Okay, the reason why I did that is because even though that is a more realistic looking eye than this one, the principle stays the same. Here is, turn that taper back on before I mess my whole drawing up. Here is the circle. Here is the inner part. There's the inner part here. And even though I've drawn that straight, I could probably draw it a little bit curved. Okay. And there's muscles all the way up here that dictate the eyebrow, especially whenever I'm doing a cartoon stylized character like this. Shadow that in slightly. Okay. And then we're going to put a little bit of eye shine on that. Good. And now I have to start thinking in terms of face structure. So remember we talked about perspective, things in the distance being small, things coming toward us are going to be bigger. Okay. So that being said, this cheek right here, we're going to have the eye come around and it's going to come out. This goes in and then it comes out. In, out. Depending on how I want to create this character comes in and then it comes out a little bit because she's got this part right here. It's kind of like the bone kind of jutting out just a little bit. And I've got these skin folds that come around here. Right? Now I'm at a place. Let's go ahead and erase that eyeball. Okay. Now, how can I give him a little bit more character than where he is? Now, could I sit here and mess around with all these little schmancy details? Yeah, I can. But I need to remember, first of all, this isn't a, a rendering. This is just a sketch. So you need to call it. And I say call it, meaning there's a point where you have to call it, and that's as far as you're going to go. So let's go ahead and layer, merge down. So I'm going to give him a little hat. Let's go ahead and move that down slightly. I'm going to give him just a little hat, and I'm going to add a layer, because just in case I don't want to do that, I want to be able to remove it. So hats. Hats are interesting. I could give him a cowboy hat, right? Cowboy hat. Oops. Okay. I don't know why it's on the eraser. That's weird. Why is it on the eraser? Oh, never mind. I still hit the eraser button. <laughs> so, cowboy hat's not too bad, but it's not really funny. Right? It doesn't really do anything for me. So, let's get rid of that. Let's add another layer. So I deleted the old layer. So what would be funny? Ball cap, yeah. What about one of those old-timey baller, like the banker baller hats? So let's go ahead and do this. It's always good to have reference, and obviously I don't, because I did this on kind of like a fly whim. So forgive me if it turns out horribly bad. Okay, so let's move that down slightly. And that's one of the things I also see a lot of times is you don't take into account that there needs to be space up here for the hat to sit on your head. A lot of times I'll see hats that are all the way up here and that doesn't make any sense. So always kind of position your hat and, and it helps that I've got this to where you can see inside of it. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So let's go ahead and flush this out a little bit more.
Remember we talked about round? We talked about spheres being round. The same thing applies here to the hat. Okay, it's round, it comes down. Okay, that's pretty funny. Okay. Even down a little bit more. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy this layer and I'm going to erase what is inside the hat. Make that brush a little bit smaller. To define that silhouette that much better. Okay, so now I'm going to layer, since I like it, merge down. And I'm going to go underneath. So to do that, I hit the add layer and I hit control that will add it underneath. By default, Photoshop adds the layer on top. So let's go ahead and hit, okay, pressure. I want on and I want the taper off. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of value here and there to give it that form that I'm looking for. Form being height, width, and depth and a little bit of a light source. So we're gonna go ahead and color that, shade that in a little bit, because he's kind of sinister. Maybe he's a villain. Aren't all alligators villains? No, that was a trick question. Beans is not a villain. But this, of course, is not Beans. This is just a random alligator that I'm drawing, an alligator character. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you guys today. I wanted to show you to how to draw a simple alligator using simple shapes um, in a digital environment in Photoshop. This basic principle can be applied to a myriad of different techniques and different, uh, you know, characters and and animals and whatnot. Now I am using my textured brush. So let's go to this brush right here, which is so wonderful. Let's add a layer because again, I don't know if I want to keep it. So let's go ahead and shade some of this in a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Pressure sensitivity on the modern tablets is wonderful. And you can enlarge your brush, you can adjust the pressure, the taper, all of those things. So let's go ahead and come down here. Right. So let's go to the eraser. I see a couple things that I want to get rid of. Here and there. So let's layer merge down, layer, merge down. So now we have him on one layer. Here's the initial, and suddenly he's got some oomph to him. So a little bit of character, which is nice. My machine is, I believe my machine is updating right now. That's why it's causing some, some grief. Okay, so let's go ahead, get a little bit more sharp. Now it's good to do this. I've zoomed all the way out. I'm enlarging my brush. Now I'm gonna give it a little bit more value from a distance because whenever you're really far in like this, you can't see the image as a whole. So it's so much better whenever you zoom out. It'll give you a better understanding of what you need to shade and shadow. And then finally, add a layer. I change the layer transparency to overlay. I come up here to white, and I'm gonna put in just some simple 
little itty bitty highlights here and there to help give it a little bit more contrast overall. He looks bad. Give a little bit of shadowing and shading. A little bit in there, here and there, blah blah blah. Oops. Control on the right layer, which I see something happened. Okay. Okay, a little bit of reflective light down here. Good. Go back. And that's it. Just having a little bit of fun. Let's get that. Uh, oh, yeah, we can get him a little bit of. Make him pop a little bit more. Maybe he's in a smoky room or something. All right, whoops. So that's it, drawing a simple character side view using Photoshop and simple shapes. Thank you guys for visiting the channel, and as always, go out and draw something awesome. Stay tuned, lots of really cool things happening, and um, please like and subscribe if you like what you see. We'll see you soon.